We have news in terms of the debt ceiling. I'm going to give you the news, but I'm also going to tell you why I really haven't been covering the debt ceiling story that much. And I know that there's some in the audience who agree with my reasoning and there's some in the audience who uh, who don't. So to begin with, the House is going to vote to extend the debt ceiling through early December. CNN reporting on this. The House of Representatives expected to vote today to extend the debt limit through early December after the Senate approved a stopgap measure last week in a bid to avert a catastrophic default and economic disaster. Once the Democratic controlled House passes the short term extension, it will be cleared for President Joe Biden's signature. Uh, Janet Yellen, the Treasury secretary, warned lawmakers the federal government will likely run out of cash by October 18 unless Congress raises the debt ceiling, setting up a ticking clock and high stakes. Congress may not even have that long to act since the deadline is more of a best guess estimate than a set in stone deadline. That dynamic intensified pressure on Democrats and Republicans to reach a deal to address the debt limit. OK, so what we're talking about here is passing a debt limit increase to enable the Treasury to keep borrowing money to pay bills for two months. This would be temporary. This will set up another round of the exact same thing in December. So why haven't I been talking about this that much? Quite frankly, and, and I, I want to be careful with my language. You as an individual should barely care about this. The debt ceiling was created in the first place to put a limit on how much debt the government could take on without requiring a really clumsy process that was in place beforehand. We don't even need to go over the process that was in place beforehand. The point was just let them take on debt, but cap it so they can't go beyond a certain amount without coming back to us. It's sort of actually a uh, Sahil Bloom has a good Twitter thread on this. And Sahil tweeted, this is sort of like it used to be that you had to get approval every time you wanted to buy something on your credit card. Now it's you just have a spending limit in total on the credit card and you can buy whatever you want until you hit that limit. If you hit the limit, you got to ask for an increase every once in a while. You're going to need to raise it. Why? Well, the country keeps growing. The economy keeps growing. And so even if you maintain the same percentage of the economy in debt, the raw numbers are going to go up over time. But this entire process was basically a rubber stamp. We've got to raise it. We've got to raise it. We're a growing country. Our economy grows. We've got to raise the debt ceiling. Debt ceiling increases, remember, are needed for prior spending that's already been authorized. Republicans like to play this game where they say we're not going to do this and allow Democrats to keep spending us into debt oblivion. Hold, hold on. That's grandstanding. That's a lie. It, they want to pretend that this is to stop Democrats from spending. It's for prior spending that was already approved by Congress. The fear is if they don't do this, the U.S. will default on its debt. So then all the fear mongering and the headlines start and Republicans say we're going to default because we have too much debt and Democrats won't stop spending. The reality is we default if Republicans don't raise the debt ceiling, which is supposed to be merely perfunctory. Some Republicans will say that's the problem. It can't be perfunctory that we go into more and more and more debt. But the time to talk about that is when you authorize the spending that now simply needs to be paid for. And what we end up doing is giving oxygen to something where nobody really benefits from there being more stories about the debt ceiling. We're actually giving them attention, which makes them more eager not to just raise the debt ceiling and let's continue. So they're going to get this solved for two months. It'll come up again in December. It'll get solved again. And it's in no one's interest to actually not raise the debt ceiling over the long term. And if people didn't ignorantly react to it, it would get less oxygen oxygen to begin with, and it would deflate this as something that Republicans want to get attention for. Think about the number of interviews over the last you know, weeks, months, however long, all about this. And in the interviews, they're not even mentioning the fundamental point, which is we are now Republicans. We are now trying not to raise the debt ceiling to pay for spending. We already approved. We already approved the spending. It's not for new spending. It's not for Joe Biden's new proposals. It's just not what it's for. So the reason I haven't been covering it is this really shouldn't be a thing in that this is just a perfunctory part of running government. You want to run government a different way 
where this doesn't come up, we could talk about that. You want to have a bigger conversation about debt and deficit. We can do that. But this is for already approved spending. You can't now say, well, we approved it, but we're not going to cut the check, so to speak, or allow the spending to happen to cover, uh, allow the, the debt ceiling to increase to cover the spending. That's why I haven't been covering it. I don't think any of us really benefit from talking endlessly about this. If you disagree with me, let me know. Uh, next Tuesday, one week from today, 6 p.m. Eastern, we'll be having the David Pakman show live town hall. It will be streaming on one place only the David Pakman show second YouTube channel. That's Pakman live YouTube dot com slash Pakman live. We'll be opening the phone lines. Members will get priority, but it'll be open to everyone. You can sign up at join dot com. Subscribe free to the YouTube channel, YouTube dot com slash Pakman live. And we'll be live next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. I hope to see you there. The only streaming service that specializes in documentaries is called Curiosity Stream. They are one of our sponsors. Using the link below, you can get Curiosity Stream for just 15 bucks a year, which gives you access to a massive library of the best and newest documentaries by the world's best documentary filmmakers. I'm constantly finding documentaries on Curiosity Stream that I can't find on Netflix, Hulu or Amazon. I just finished watching a film called 9-11 Kids, which is about the kids that were in the room being read to by former President George W. Bush on 9-11 when Bush learned about what happened. Very interesting and well done. They have documentaries on every topic imaginable. You can watch on all of your devices. If you love documentaries like I do, Curiosity Stream is a must. And they're giving my audience 25% off. That comes out to just $14.99 a year. You just have to go to curiositystream.com slash Pacman, and the link is down below.